When we're talking about checkpoint architecture, normally we're referring to the three tier architecture, which is the smart console, which is the GUI, where you more or less see all your changes, you can do all the changes. And then we have the security management server that actually holds the policy, the monitoring, the logs, the box that is actually controlling the firewalls that you interact with, with the smart console. Then we have the security gateways, and this is the enforcement points. And security gateways is checkpoint word for a firewall. So if we check here the diagram, we have the smart console. You connect to the management station, and the management station is connecting to the security gateway, the firewall. And the firewall sends response back to the security management server, so it can be presented within the smart console. So it's the smart console, the security management server, and the security gateway. That's the three-tier architecture. So if we're checking the smart console, the GUI itself, this is a Windows-only application. So if you're running like Linux or Mac OS, you need to use like a jump gate. Sadly, you need one console per major version. So if you have management station running R81, and then another one running R81.10, and then a third one running R81.20, Sadly, you need three different consoles then, because they don't have any backwards capability. But keep in mind, it's the version of the management server that is important. Because if we go back here, the smart console itself, it connects to the management station. It doesn't connect to the, to the gateway itself. So you can have management station running one higher version, like R81.20, and the gateway is running on a lower version. And they can still be controlled by the management station. There is a compatibility matrix for this, so you can see which version are supported, vice versa. Thankfully, this version is now auto-updatable. So starting from R81, it updates itself if Checkpoint release new fixes for the, the GUI itself. Still only within the major version. There is a web smart console that has limited functionalities. Yes, you can edit your rule base, you can push the policy and so on. But there are a lot of things that is not available within the web console. So it's a great complement, but as of today, it's not up to par with the real client version. So if you're running Mac OS or Linux, yes, you can use the web smart console, but it will not be enough for a full admin to run the web smart console as it is today in July 2023. So the smart console itself is where you can see like the status of your gateways, what versions they're running, what functions. So there are some basic monitoring functions within this. You should still have active monitoring within a different system. So you get like alerts and so on if something happens. And you have the possibility to change the rule base and you can see the logs, you can have some reportings. So there are a lot of features within the smart console and the plan or the, the goal for the smart console is that it should be the only application that you need to manage a checkpoint environment. It's not fully like that yet. There are some things that is not implemented within the smart console that you need different portals for, but it's coming there. So the smart console itself, it connects to the security management server, the second part of the three tier architecture. The management server, as well as the gateway, is running Checkpoint OS, and this is a Linux version running on kernel 3.10 or newer, uh, but it's called Gaia. So Gaia is the Checkpoint operating system that is existing today. There have been many versions before, such as Splat, but it's not available anymore within any supported version. So the current one is Gaia. So the Checkpoint management server, it can run on appliances, it can run as a VM in a private or public cloud. It can run on open server. Open server is like physical hardware from like HP or Dell or Supermicro or some vendor that's supplying servers. The only requirement is that it's supported within the hardware compatibility list. And this is available on Checkpoint's website. You can also have as a service from Checkpoint running in a public cloud. So the security management server, it manages all the security gateways, meaning the firewalls. It manages all the objects that you build your rule base, and the rule base is called the policy. So it's managing everything like that, and it also hosts like smart event and reporting features. So it's where you can see all your logs and all the reports. 
The Checkpoint Management Server is also able to integrate with a lot of third-party services from Checkpoint, and you can integrate it with other vendors as well to make the rule base more, well, a lot better. So you can like gather objects or fetch objects from public cloud or private cloud, such as uh, Azure AWS or VMware NSX or Nutanix or Cisco ACI. So there are a lot of possibilities to build a rule base a lot more flexible than just to use IP addresses. And this integration goes from the management server using APIs to different places, both on-prem and public cloud. One of the nicest features when it comes to Checkpoint is the scalability, especially on the management server. On the gateways, it's more or less obvious, but the management server can scale really big. So you can have distributed or standalone, meaning you can run a management server on the gateway itself. It's not recommended from me. I always recommend distributed because it's, well, it's a lot better. It's a lot easier. Uh, but you can also have separate log servers. You can have separate event servers. You can run as HA. So there are a lot of possibilities. And on top of all this, you can also have a multi-domain. So it's multi-tenant. So it's perfect for service providers. So when it comes to the security gateways, meaning the firewalls, they also run on Checkpoint OS, meaning Gaia, same as the management station. It's actually the same ISO in most cases. Where you, act, where you only like select if it's going to be a security gateway or a security management server. So you do that during the installation phase. And this can also be running on appliances from all different type of sizes, from like the SMB type to the hyperscale security data center, Uber alles. Or you can have it as a virtual machine, so it can like auto scale, and this can be on-prem or um, in public cloud. It's not possible to have auto scale within on-prem, I believe, maybe within Kubernetes or something like that. But as of today, I don't think it's available with auto scale there. Then you can run it as open server, same as the management, same as the management station, meaning on physical hardware that you buy from like HP, Dell or whatever server vendor that you use. Same here, it needs to be compliant with the hardware keep compatibility list available on Checkpoint's website, or you can run it in the public cloud. In more or less all the big public cloud vendors, AVS, Google Cloud, um, Azure, Oracle Cloud, Alibaba Cloud, etc., etc. There is a bunch of public clouds that it's available to run Checkpoint services on. And the security gateway, it's the enforcement point. It's the it's the firewall. It inspects the traffic, it logs the traffic, it routes the traffic if it needs to, and it takes decisions if it's going to, to pass it along or drop the traffic. So the security gateway is the firewall itself, but the firewall itself is useless without the smart console and the management station. So you're not able to like put in rules within CLI or log in only to the um, the gateway itself and add rules. So this need to be added within the security management server. The security management server can run on the firewall appliance itself. So it becomes a bit complicated, but it's different GUIs and so on. And as I mentioned before, always run it in distributed. So you have a separate box for the management station and a separate box for the firewall. And when it comes to firewall itself, you should always run it in clusters. There is something called software blades. This is the function such as IPS, URL filtering, application control, anti-bot, etc., etc. This is the features that you can enable on the firewall to do more advanced things than only like permit and deny based on an IP and port. And this software blades, they are of course licensed. Some of them are uh, subscription-based and some of them are perpetual, meaning that they are all, all always included within the box and you don't need to pay a yearly or a monthly service for it other than support. But the more advanced features that is requiring constant updates from like services online, such as IPS with signatures, they are subscription-based and you pay a yearly fee for to use it. So all of this is pretty cool. 
So if you log into the management station, you can do integration with like identity awareness. You can pick up different devices. You can build your security policy based on applications. So it doesn't need to be IP addresses. IP addresses, yes, it's the base functionalities, but to have an adapted rule base, you need to add more stuff. You need to add more functionalities. You need to build your rule base on the users, the devices, the applications that they're using. And the benefit with Checkpoint is that from the same management station, you can have one policy that is applied to 100 firewalls with one click. Like install policy and it installs on 100 boxes. Or you can have multiple different policies within the same management station that you send to different firewalls. And it doesn't matter if it's on-prem or in public cloud, you can do it from the same management station. And this is something that is really cool. And this is something that we will check on more within this series. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.